Chaperone, Father James Wallace, Deacon Hank Lyon. Hey. We want to talk about First Communion, which was supposed to happen this Saturday here at St. Juliana. But obviously we can't do that with coronavirus. It's been postponed along with the Sacrament of Confirmation. This is always a great time of year, so it's sad that we can't come together to give these great sacraments. But we thought we would talk about it, maybe share our own memories from our own First Communion. and a little highlights. A little theology on the Eucharist and Ooh. so forth. Do you remember your First Communion, Deacon Hank? I do. Uh, sunny day. Uh, got to wear my suit and... Yeah, it was special. It was feeling <laughs> like Easter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good memories. Is that it? Anything else? We had like I, a family party, some gift exchanges and stuff. And where was where did you receive your first communion? Uh, St. Mary's in Buffalo Grove. And do you remember the date? The year? Uh, May 2002? Uh, two, mine was May 15th, 1994. Wow. I received, that was when I received my first communion. In between the Chicago Bulls championship three-peat runs, those are my earliest mm. sports memories, by the way. I know we're t t supposed to talk about First Communion memories, but let me just <laughs> stick to the topic. go on a little tangent here because they've been showing this ESPN, this Last Dance documentary on the on the Bulls. And I remember, I think my earliest one was the Trailblazers in 92, and then I remember the Suns vaguely in 93, and I definitely remember the, the second three-peat. And I do remember my First Communion as well. It was a beautiful day. I also had the little suit on, the, the blazer. I was a little chunk as a kid, so I felt, <laughs> I felt like fat guy in a little coat. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that blazer ripped at some point in that afternoon party when I bent over. Any other good memories from that day? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember my dad made my first communion banner, basically, which was wow. funny. We were supposed to make it ourselves. And right. I just kind of sat and watch cartoons while he did the whole <laughs> thing. And I still have it, actually, and I've nice. showed it. Remember when I showed it on first communion? Uh, I do, yeah. A couple years ago yep. to the to the kids. Yeah. You still have your banner? I do. My mom has it. It's, Whoa. it's in a box somewhere. Who uh, made it? I did. I what remember, was on it? Uh, symbols of the Eucharist, but I remember my brother, uh, I saw his first and it was very simple design. <laughs> I, I thought, uh, I'm not <laughs> going that route. <laughs> simple construction <laughs> yeah. paper thrown on there. Basically. So my mom gave me these options, and I crafted something together. Yeah, Deke is Deacon Hank is a. I called you Deke. <laughs> Deke is a uh, artist, like we've talked about before. So, what were some of the symbols of the Eucharist on there? Maybe that'll be a nice segue into some of the theology of communion. Sure. Uh, there was the host, the chalice. I think I had an image of the Holy Spirit coming down. Maybe. Mm. I think. Yeah, my dad made a chalice with the host. I think there was a Bible. I think there was also a bird holy spirit and i think there was like a flower or something maybe because uh -huh. it was may and uh -huh. mothers and mary and all that good stuff and yeah kind of kind of touching so <laughs> it's always a great day to see all the kids with their banners and uh dressed up in suits and dresses and i always find it i make the comment um is that the especially the the little girls with their white dresses mm. they're like miniature wedding dresses uh -huh. in a way and yeah it's kind of a nice I tell them, you know, God willing, uh, if you're called the sacrament of marriage, you'll be in this church, whatever it is, 20 years from now, in a bigger dress, but you'll also yeah. be receiving Jesus. And communion is something you'll receive the rest of your life. Right. To receive Christ and then... Or you could become a bride of Christ in a religious world. Ooh, be a nun too. And yeah, also wear a, somewhat of a, a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. And then whenever it is, 40, 50 years after your your marriage, then we'll all be here around you in church um celebrating your true first communion which i mentioned before your time to be with jesus forever in heaven yep. I, I, around your death and so the yeah. back to first communion. <laughs> yeah sad. uh this is supposed ah. to be a happy day <laughs> not talking about death but uh anyways yeah so some of the theology you want to give a quick uh you're studying all this stuff right now so it should be fresh what's, brain hurts. what's the eucharist yeah. What is the Eucharist? So the Eucharist is the miracle of a oh, oh, big term, transubstantiation. So at the night of the Last Supper, Holy Thursday, our Lord wanted to leave us with his uh, body and blood as a lasting presence with us, a way to nourish our souls. So he takes simple bread and simple wine, and by his, the power of his words, changes them into his flesh, into his blood, and passes this on to his priests. So transubstantiation, very quickly, two words that um, break down this uh, big word, trans going, uh, changing from one thing to another, and substance, subs the sub part, 
So the substance of bread is what its essential quality is, and what is left um, are appearances, accidents, like taste. It looks like bread, but it is not bread. Substantially, it has been changed into the flesh of our Lord. That's a very quick... Yeah, but it tastes like Eucharist. cardboard. It tastes like cardboard, yeah. Wine I've explained like it once. Cheap wine. Uh, it's a very simple analogy. So but I think our take... wine's pretty good. Sure. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> go ahead with your analogy. A little analogy is you take a, a whole peanut... And if I took out, left the shell, but took out the internal like peanuts and replaced them with like jelly beans or something, you would you still would have, replace it with I would, beans. absolutely. Uh, you would still have the shell and it would still look like a peanut, taste like a peanut, um, but inside it's inherently changed. I, I'd use the image of uh, creating a baseball bat. I guess we're peanuts and baseball together. <laughs> Me out too. Yeah, you, you take a piece of wood, a log, that's a log or a piece of wood, you carve it into a baseball bat it's you wouldn't say i'm swinging a log it's you're swinging a baseball bat the the matter the elements it's still hard it's still wood but the substance has changed you've, you've changed the quality of this thing into a into a baseball bat or, or what it is in, in essence uh so the boys and girls and all of us receive uh jesus's uh his true body and his his real essence and there's beautiful stories of of the Eucharist, Eucharistic miracles in our church's history. Um, I told the story one time of a little Chinese girl, little Lee is her mm -hmm. name, and I wrote about That's her one time story. in the Bolton about how, and Fulton Sheen said this was one of the most powerful stories that he's ever heard was this, this young little girl in, in communist China, um, the, the whole village was taken into a Catholic church, they were Catholic, and these uh, communist soldiers came in, they put the priest, the local pastor in a cage, and <laughs> which I'm sure some people want to do to me at times, and maybe Deacon Hank as well. No. And he took the he took a saborium out of the tabernacle, threw it all threw all the hosts over the place to desecrate the Eucharist, and then uh, forbade anyone from going back in the church. The priest was locked up into this cage, and so the girl, little Lee, would come back every day, sneak into the church, and take a host off the ground with her tongue, and she received all those hosts on the last day uh, when she was receiving a host in front of the priest the the guard came in and and shot her so that's another i don't know why i'm on death and sadness <laughs> first give you but it just shows this little chinese girl's devotion to the eucharist and i know many of you have a similar devotion to it and you're experiencing a deep sorrow since you can't receive jesus in the eucharist these days mm -hmm. hang tough yeah and we're praying for you and offering mass for you we are we are and and god willing we'll be able to receive that uh sacrament of communion ourselves and and give it to our second or maybe third graders by the time they receive it and they can have a beautiful celebration like we did when we were when we were kids and it was one of the most important significant moments of our lives and it is probably the most significant that we think we do every day amen amen god bless you peace